What's up, y'all? Welcome to High Noon Racing. Under this torn cover is our 98 Firebird Scoots. It's our Project F body. Now, we named this thing Scoots because the idea is it's going to scoot. Now, Scoots is a little confused here. It's decided to transition into an eight second quarter mile unit. <laughs> unit. On the first episode, prepping the foundation, I ripped out all the wiring. So how am I gonna make things like the tail lights, the starter, and other stuff work? I'll show you. Today, I'm gonna show y'all how to make a nice wire harness for next to nothing for your race car or race truck. Basically, you're gonna take any kind of rope or line or twine or anything, some masking tape and a Sharpie, and you're gonna route it all through your car, taping it all off how you would route a wire harness. Then you just label it, and when you're done, you have your mock-up for a wire harness. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a simple demonstration of what's actually going on here. The start of this started at the wiring panel, and then we routed it everywhere we wanted to route it. And by the time it got to first headlight, we measured off and labeled for our first headlight. Then we routed it, measured off, and labeled for our other headlight. So now this, when we run the wires, is the complete path that we'll need for doing a harness for the headlights. So here's the starting point. That's where it splits off. One goes to the compressor, and I still gotta run the wires for the tail lights. Splits there, goes up and around to the top for the dome light LEDs and splits off for the trunk light LEDs. Oh, by the way, all this wire is recycled wire. Didn't pay a dime for any of it. And yeah, got some thicker gauge wires in there. And basically, you're gonna take this disgusting mess of used wires and turn it into this. Not too bad, huh? Got dome light, trunk lights, Compressor power on ground. Then the main harness here, where it's all gonna connect. And then our brake lights. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm not paying $70 for a bump button and a trans brake button. I'm just not doing it. So I got this on Amazon for like 10 bucks. And I already had this, it's also from Amazon. It's a nice little button though. I designed and 3D printed these. If you're interested in the file, put it in the description for free. These screws, uh, I don't know off the top of my head, but I will also include those screws and their nuts in the description so you know what they are. And yeah, I'm not paying 70 bucks for a trans breaker bump button. Some people are like, well, it's not gonna coil, so how are you gonna like disconnect the steering wheel to hang it up? Well, got a plan for that too. These guys, Somewhere in like this area, I'm just gonna wire in a four wire plug and when I want to take the steering wheel off I just unclip it. When I want to put it back on, I just clip it in. This thing only goes one way because it has those holes in that notch right there. So you don't gotta worry about that. And then when I'm ready to take the steering wheel off, I'll just unclip it and hang it up. Simple as that. cool so now we know how to do that but still how do we wire up the starter how do we make this all kind of like function that's where Howerton performance comes in check these guys out <laughs> So I found Howerton Performance on Facebook and reached out to them and I told them I was interested in getting one of their setups and this is one of their Pro Series setups and basically it has all your relays, all your fuses, really clean routing of the wires and they're all labeled for however you want them. 
So you reach out, you tell them what you want, and they'll make it happen. And then it all comes with this really nice connector. I additionally requested for a solid state relay for the trans brake. So that's how that's gonna all get controlled. If you know how relays work, that's great. If you don't know how relays work, well, I'm probably not the guy to explain it. But basically what a relay is, these guys, is they got like three to five wires. There's probably ones with more. And one of the wires, if you send it positive, it will trigger the relay, closing it, basically basically like flipping a switch and then the relay will have power supplied to it from like a main power source and it will supply the power also to whatever your accessory is. So basically if you want to run like a really thin wire to a switch or whatever you want to power something like fans that are super power hungry and need a lot of amperage to maintain and power they're a thicker gauge wire that's where a relay comes in. Now you can put a relay on anything so basically this is what I got set up from Howerton Performance. And there's my switch panel. I had him custom label. So I got my compressor switch. I got my fans on the switch, which I'm probably gonna remove that because I'm just gonna let the Holly do the fans. And then I got boost on a switch. And what that is, is that's gonna be turning the boost controller on and off in the Holly. So when I wanna do a burnout, I turn it off and then it's just running on wastegate. So it's not running on whatever we have our boost control set up to. So before before we do a pass, we turn it off, do our burnout, turn it back on stage and do the pass. Headlights, that's kind of self-explanatory. Dome is actually not dome pressure. That's going to be dome lights, like the interior lights that we've been showing you guys the whole video. And then this is just auxiliary for something down the road, I don't know, nitrous, uh, whatever. The ignition, pretty, pretty standard what that is. That's just going to turn on the holly. And then this momentary switch is going to go to our starter. So how do we wire the starter? All right. So so this switch has a wire that's gonna run through and into one of these relays. One of these relays is gonna have an output wire that goes to one of these outputs. So let's see, start, starter. So you're gonna take this wire and run it to a starter solenoid. And I'll show you that now. So that wire is gonna come to your starter. On newer vehicles, there's usually a starter solenoid on the starter itself, just like this. It's gonna be a trigger wire. It's probably that little guy, but it could be the ground. I don't know, I'd have to look up a diagram. But basically, from the relay, the trigger wire is going to go to this guy. And that's where it will tell it to start the starter. Simple as that. All right, let's move on to brakes. Damn. So for race applications, most, um, most of you are gonna have what's called manual brakes or a manual brake master cylinder. It doesn't have a brake booster. So the way this is gonna work is most of these kits will actually come with, basically it's a mechanical switch that operates on pressure. Once the pressure pushes it enough, it closes the switch, which will send whatever you're feeding it through the switch itself. So if you're feeding it a positive wire, it's open all the time. When it gets pressure, it closes that circuit and sends whatever you fed it through. So if it's positive 12 volt and it gets the pressure, AKA you're pressing the brake pedal, it'll send that positive 12 volt through this sensor. That 12 volt positive is going to feed to one of your relay triggers wires which is going to feed to accessory out to your brake lights. I hope I was able to answer any questions you might have had but if I wasn't don't be shy go ahead and comment below and I'll see if I can answer. If you like today's video make sure to check out the whole build series. You can check it out by clicking here. Now listen I'll make sure I keep sharing my secrets that's gonna save you guys a ton of cash and make you go faster but you gotta let me know I'm doing the right thing. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. All right, y'all, I'll see you in the next one.